So the F30 BMW comes in four original models. Uh, you start off with the base model, which is the 320i. Now all the F30s are based around the four-cylinder, two-litre twin-turbo engine. Now I know it sounds like quite a lot, but it's a fantastic evolution of the original um, four- and six-cylinder engines, which used to go across the, the three-series range. So in the 320, that two-litre is going to give you 135 kilowatts of power which will give you a 0 to 100 time of about 7.3 seconds. Now, that might not sound that great, but it is a base model. You know, all these cars are pretty dynamic, so you will get a good driving experience. The next up is the 320D. Now, that uh, single, sorry, direct injection turbo diesel engine will give you the same amount of kilowatts, but you'll get a little bit more torque, so it'll be slightly slippier off the line, but uh, a 0 to 100 speed of 7.5. Now, that sounds like a huge difference when you consider you're also getting massive savings. Now, with the diesel, you're going to get about 4.5 liters to the 100. If you drive normally, of course, and you're not dicing too hard. From there, the 3 Series offering gets a little bit more interesting. Um, that 4-cylinder 2-liter turbo engine is quite something. And in the 328, you get a staggering 180 kilowatts. Now, 180 kilowatts gives you a lot more grunt. So, you're going to get a 0 to 105.9 seconds. So the more impressive thing about the 328, which could actually be the sort of best value sort of proposition here in this series, is that the 328 replaces the old 33i. Sorry, 330i. Now the 330 was a staggering 45 kilograms heavier than the, the current 328. And that's got a lot to do with the fact that, well, the 328's got two less cylinders. So you're gonna get the same amount of performance, but you're gonna give it a lighter car. 45 kilograms, that's kind of like driving without your model girlfriend, perhaps. So, as BMW make things, make their cars more dynamic, more powerful, they also become more efficient. Put Cardi Minogue on. So, um, the 328 has already got an Engine of the Year award to its name. It's very fast, as you can see, 5.9 seconds to the 100. But that leads us on to this one, the big daddy of them all, the 335i. Now the 335i has retained its previous power plant from the E90, which is the generation before of course. Now in here you're going to get 225 kilowatts of power. That will propel you to from 0 to 105.5 seconds. Now I've been driving this car for about three weeks and I'm actually quite keen to disprove that figure. Because I think in the sport mode you can definitely get it closer to the five seconds flat. Now if this light would just go green, I'll maybe show you some of that. Now, a great new feature across the entire range, the BMW 3 Series range, is the driver experience control. One such control is the Eco Pro mode. Now, the Eco Pro mode basically sets the car up to be a lot more sort of fuel efficient. Now, that means that it governs the, how you um, accelerate and all the little features that you use that do require some sort of well, power from your car. So, accelerator mapping means you're far more gradual how you pull off the devices itself use less energy and it all results back onto greater efficiency. Now along with that there's a feature called stop start. Now when you put your foot on the brake, sorry, <laughs> the car actually shuts off completely. Now what this does is that well, instead of your car idling and using fuel, it stops that. So when you take your foot off the brake, starts again so you can then proceed driving. Another point that maximizes the efficiency is the 8-speed gearbox. Now the 8-speed gearbox enables you to have a smoother ride because your gear transitions are a hell of a lot smoother on a certain rev range. Once again it's then limiting the fluctuations which do use more petrol. From the mode up on that you get the comfort mode. Now what the comfort mode is is basically just your Perfect BMW driving experience, maximizing stability, making sure that your driver comfort is just right, the power is there when you need it. Uh, it's just basically what you would use sort of your day to day driving. On top of that, things get a little bit more spicy. We have the sport mode. As you can see by the display, things go a little bit red. They go even slightly redder when you go into the sport plus. Now, all this does is that it makes the car a whole lot more responsive. Now, in this mode, your car goes from a soft and comfort cruiser into something that literally wants to eat tarmac. Now, I can't show you here because we got into a bit of a tricky uh, congestion zone, but uh, your throttle becomes a lot more responsive, your steering a lot more powerful and, and able to corner better and be a lot more dynamic. Your suspension stiffens up, meaning your... See the temptation? 
foundation is just to put the foot down and experience all these different things. So your car's a whole lot more responsive. Now, like I said, an auto 100 time, I think I can just prove in this mode, because the moment you want to get something out of the car, it just gives you a flash. So there's four modes. I would generally say that you just drive around in comfort. Uh, try the Eco Pro on a long haul sort of drive. I tried it from Durban to Joburg. It was quite impressive. When we drove down, we used comfort and a little bit of sport mode. And we used just over uh, just over a tank of petrol. Driving back in the Eco Pro mode, we used just under three quarters of a tank. Now they generally say the Eco Pro mode, if used conservatively, will reduce fuel consumption by up to 20%. 3% is quite a lot, but like I said, it is slightly slightly more sluggish in that mode, and a lot of people won't be buying the 335i, this current model, to be conserving petrol. But nice to know that you can. On the inside of the car, well, you get three lines in the new BMW 3 Series. You get the Sport line, you get the Luxury line, and you get the Modern line. We are currently in the Sport line, which for, I think, someone of my age category is fantastic. You see the nice dashes of red, uh, the nice sporty steering wheel and generally just a cockpit that makes you feel like a proper driver Now the new 3 series is bigger than the old one So you slightly have a slightly more more space, but you've still got that lovely sort of close-in driver feel which makes you want to go out and Show the road who's boss Now the all 3 series wasn't exactly cheap inside But the new one definitely has a, lot, a much more sort of premium feel to it Now another thing that's kind of different is the display screen here now that is fixed and it has a much more of a sort of smartphone feel to it and the purpose of it being like that is that it's also a lot lighter now this car is all about dynamic and dynamic performance so the lighter sort of elements like this in the dash all just helps toward becoming more efficient and obviously delivering greater performance i know it sounds quite anal but every little bit does count and uh, when you in precision engineering as with all german cars like this it all adds up now the luxury line you'll find a bit more sort of cigar lounge kind of feel than a driver cockpit so you've got nice big brown leather seats you've got sort of touches of wood that kind of stuff it's slightly more your older category and then with the modern line you have more sort of flares of pearl and other things that are well not quite my cup of tea slightly more beigey kind of options it could be more your sort of dad's kind of category Onto the exterior now of the BMW 3 Series. Now it is a bigger car, it's bigger than the E90, which means about 93 millimeters in length, 47 millimeters in the back, and 37 millimeters in the front. Now one of the most striking aspects is the new front. Now you can see the headlights here merge nicely into the kidney grille on quite a sporty line. So straight away it's got a more dynamic look. This is something that maybe has been lacking in previous 3 Series, but doesn't end there. Now it has a longer wheelbase, 15 millimeters to be exact. Now together with the coupe roofline, it really does make for a fantastic sporting saloon. Now it's been an icon since the 70s, the 3 Series, it really has been. Now what they've done with the new F30, it's, it really is amazing. There's a lot of hype that comes out with each new generation and this is totally living up to it. It's still, well, it only got released in Feb worldwide. Now this is going to obviously come out in the coupe, it's going to come out in the M3 and it's going to come out with a retractable roof. When it does, well, I hope I can test those too. I know this is my first test, this is the first car I've actually really gotten to know and looked at in a very analytical kind of sense, critical sense. But uh, every time I walk away from it I still look at it, it's a great looking car. And I think even if it was my 50th or 60th test, I think I still would look at it in the same way. It's a car that's going to date well. It's a car that I hopefully have for longer than expected. And it's a car I just can't wait to get back into every single time.